this is the first time that all the rewards are unlocked. For us, you know, this is kind of like a food delivery of the promise of proof of stake, which is to allow people to unstake and to get all the rewards from the staking validators uh, to their own possession. This is going to boost the confidence to the whole community because uh, without unstake, this is not the complete functionality of uh, proof of stake. As the second largest blockchain and also the, the largest proof of stake blockchain in terms of market cap, the movement of Ethereum getting into such a design actually introduced the first market risk-free long-term yield curve to Ethereum uh, itself. So this has huge implications to the token holders in terms of you know, their, their rewards. Uh, at the same time, this brings the most sustainable DeFi yield into DeFi ecosystem, which is the largest use case of Ethereum so far. And we also believe you know, this will be you know, the attractive points to get the institutions to look at it so that they know where the yield comes from. So at RockX, we have been working very closely with a lot of institutions. So one of the key reservations in the past for them to support Ethereum staking is that they're not comfortable with the undefined timeline of when can they withdraw because this has implications on liquidity and also tenure. But now, given that part of the uh, concerns has been resolved, we do foresee that more institutions will be comfortable uh, to get into this space. Currently, the staking ratio at Ethereum is only 15%. And if you compare to other proof of stake blockchains, staking ratio could go up to easily 40% or even 50%. So this is where we also do believe that equilibrium or the staking ratio seeing a very huge uh, growth in the, in the coming years. So that also means that we're gonna see a much bigger number of validators in the market. How to make all the validators more decentralized and also more robust. That's one part that we've been looking at very closely. Um, so that's called distributed validator technology. So that involves a lot of cryptography and also very clear innovative designs uh, to make things more collaborative among different stakeholders in the space. And of course, with MEV now uh, working closely with validators, so that's where we can also start to see innovations on how to make more uh, efficient MEV market, how to make MEV more meaningful or less taxing on the retail users. A few interesting ideas that we have been having with our uh, partners. One could be a uh, staking-based passive managed fund that is powered by Ethereum uh, staking. You know, some other asset management firms are looking at using the yield coupled with structured products to uh, offer you know, more hedged financial products to their customers. Many more possibilities has been opened up rather than just trading or lending in the past. Staking is the third option, and this is also one that uh, institutions have never touched in the past. So these are the kind of examples uh, of innovation that we're, we're going to see. It's quite clear that um, Ethereum staking is not a security. The reason is that the reward that comes to you is actually in return of the work that you have done, which is to validate the transactions on Ethereum network. In this case, you are actually running a virtual machine that does all the settlement work. This is unlike you are providing capital in order to earn yield. You have not lent out your money, you are actually doing work for the network. This actually checks every single you know, uh, boxes on this is not a security. I think this matters a lot from the institutional perspective, but from the native blockchain itself, uh, it's less of a concern. SEC has stated that even over 50% of the validators are based in US, hence US has the jurisdiction rights uh, over Ethereum. In my personal view, um, I don't really agree with that statement. I'm holding the view that Ethereum, just like uh, internet or uh, other kind of infrastructure in the digital world, uh, it's neutral. Yeah, it does not belong to any uh, entities or any states. The statement that over 50% validators are run in US um, is debatable. Uh, this is a dynamic situation. More validators are being added onto each day. Uh, this is what we also see that, you know, with the Chapelle upgrade, uh, the whole network will be much more dynamic. 